I won the class clowns competition when I was in uh, my last year of high school, which that's a competition that's run by the festival to find uh, Australia's funniest high school student. I've been doing uh, Deadly Funny, which is a competition for Indigenous comedians. I, um, I love being Indigenous. One of my favourite things about being Indigenous is Dreamtime stories. Yeah, we all know Dreamtime stories. Right? I love Dreamtime stories. And like, I know a lot of modern day Indigenous people that don't believe in Dreamtime stories like it's religious gospel or anything. And I think that's a good thing, right? That's one thing you can never say about Indigenous people. You know, we don't force our beliefs onto other people, right? Like you'll never get a whole bunch of Aboriginal people walking up and down your street in nice suits, <laughs> knocking on your door, <laughs> trying to get you a pamphlet that says, Have you found the rainbow serpent? <laughs> And then eventually I had like a, an, another comedian just come up to me one day and he was like, you won Class Clowns, why aren't you doing comedy? And I was like, because I'm not 18. And he was just like, but you look like you're 25, you know? <laughs> like, so I, yeah, just started doing the open mic scene in Brisbane and that was kind of a shock because, you know, you come from winning Class Clowns into com playing in pokies rooms in Brisbane to like nobody. And I was like, oh no, this is a hard slog. It's just such an honour to come down here and perform in a venue that doesn't have poker machines on the premises, right? Like, uh, I used to perform a lot of gigs just in pokies rooms and it's awful. And I'm starting to resent poker machines and the stereotypes that they milk, right? Like, I was sitting in this pokies room and there was this Asian man playing this Asian-themed machine called Choi Sun Doa. And when Choi Sun Doa pays out, it goes ding, 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 dong, ding, 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 like the most stereotypical Asian song you can imagine. When it has a minor payout, the machine goes, Oh, it's like, I know what's going on here, right? Like, money can't buy you love, but it can buy you a shitty stereotype as long as you pay out. Like, that's inspirational. They have an Australian theme machine. I don't know if you've seen an Australian theme machine. It's called, it's called Cooey Country. And when Cooey Country pays out, it goes, Cooey! Which is ridiculous to me, because that's like a noise you'd make if you're lost and about to get murdered in the bush somewhere. <laughs> Right, if an Australian themed poker machine pays out, it should just go, get fucked. <laughs> get absolutely effed. Where would you say you get your um, material from? Is it sort of personal or is it observational or does it come from? Uh, it's just a lot of ranty kind of stuff. I'm a, I'm a big ranter. I'll kind of rant a lot to my mates and then eventually I'll kind of get drunk. <laughs> and then when I'm drunk, it's like, the rants will really kind of get tight and then eventually I'll be like, that's a good rant, you know? That's a good rant, take it on stage and stuff like that. How is your on stage persona different to, say, meeting you on the street or...? I, I always thought, like, I'm a bit shy off stage. Like, I'm, I'm very confident and very tired on stage. But I always thought I was, like, a bit shy off stage, but I realise I'm not. I'm just really antisocial. <laughs> um, I'm not good at, like, saying hello to people and stuff like that. I'm, I'm real kind of anxious and don't feel like I'm worthy of talking to anyone, which is ridiculous because for some reason I think I'm worthy of talking to people en masse. But yeah, I'm, I'm a bit anxious about yeah. one-on-one -on -one conversations. So that's an interesting point. You say it's quite, um, uh, if you're antisocial, there's that aspect of comedy where you have to sell yourself like flying out on the streets. How do you, how do you go with that? I actually kind of, I really enjoy flying, like I know like a lot of, a lot of comedians will just complain about it, especially like two weeks into the festival, but I, I did the festival last year, I've got like my lines now ready for this time around, flyering people, um, you know, people going by on bikes, I always like to, which, which sounds dangerous, but kind of give them the tour de laughs, you know, come see the tour de laughs or something like that. So before I, I've said, uh, come see five of Australia's rising comedy cars. At cars. the festival, cars instead of stars at the festival, yeah. which was awkward. <laughs> but that person did take a flyer, but they might just be upset that Top Gear's been cancelled. God damn it! So uh, they might be expecting something completely different, but that's okay. Nice. I didn't realise I was such a mumbler. Also, like when did you want to see shit? No, fuck it. Oh, yeah, yeah, you Five of Australians. You said five of Australians. I didn't even get to comedy stars. There goes Jacob. I'd like to see a showcase of five of the Australians from Rising Comedy Stars. See, sometimes I finish the pitch even though they've walked away. Yeah. They just zoom right past me. <laughs> and I'm still like, 
Australia's comedy stars. <laughs> Just walk away going, yeah, whatever, mate. Whatever. Whatever. How do you get into the zone? I Watch get, the pre-show. I get furious. I get. I try and get really mad, you know, because like the thing. I love comedy, but one of the things that it, it kind of lacks is that intensity. Like if you're a musician, you can go up there and you can, you know, you can hit your instrument really hard. You can sing as hard as you can. Like I love sport. You know, you can hit people as hard as you can, run as fast as you can. When you go up on comedy, you can't go out there. Rah! But I still like to have that energy. So I listen to like a lot of fighting music. You know, like Black Sabbath, Iron Maiden, Tupac, like whatever. We'll just so I'm going on stage like I want to tip a table over or something. Yeah. Yeah, I love having that energy, and it's, you know, as soon as I get to that mic, you got to drop that. But just have that in my head beforehand. I think that really helps me remember my stuff because it just fires me up for it. Yeah, no way. So Matt, what's what's next for you after the Comedy Zone? Well, I you know I really want to capitalise on this opportunity, so I want to do my own solo show next year. And because uh, I'm only doing 10 minutes and I'm pretty good at doing 10 minutes of comedy now. I know the material that I'll be doing during this run like, on the, like the back of my hand. So hopefully I'll just be able to, even now, you know, because the festival is such an inspiring time, you know, when you see other comedians and stuff like that and see how they put together their one hour shows. So I'll probably come up with a lot of ideas for what I want to do for next year's show during this month and then build on it when I, once I get back to Brisbane and the festival season is over and really work towards that next year. I really liked being really loud and like attention seeking in class but I don't think anyone ever thought I was funny. I think it was just <laughs> really annoying. Um, but yeah and then one day I like broke my leg and I just took heaps of Panadine for it and watched like heaps of stand up on my laptop when I was really high on <laughs> panadine foot. And I was like, I think this is probably what I want to do. My name's Dina Rayama and it's, it's really, it's a weird name, you know, and people just ask me where it's from. And it's really awkward explaining to them that I'm named after the Lion King. <laughs> you guys know that bit? It's like, <laughs> Like, that's my fucking name. <laughs> No, the reason I have a weird name uh, is actually because I'm half Japanese. Like, my dad's Japanese and my mom is a lion. <laughs> what have been some of the turning points in your career? Um, <laughs> probably the biggest one was when I just finished high school. Um, I was asked to do this show called Irrational Fear, which is a podcast. <clears throat> um, that Dan, Dan, da Dan, that Dan Illich. <laughs> Um, curates and it's like a political podcast and um, somehow I like weasel my way onto it. Will Anderson was on the lineup, um, the Chaser, guy, some of the Chaser guys, um, <clears throat> heaps of writers as well for the Chaser. It's just like heaps of amazing people and um, that's like a clip on YouTube and I think it's gotten me like a few writing gigs. It's just no. like a maybe like a five minute monologue. Um, about schoolies. I think of schoolies like Christmas beetles. They're annoying, they come out in November, they generally fly to their destination, and often they're found dead under balconies. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Although sometimes it turns out they're just sleeping. I feel like that's the turning point because from there I got a few writing jobs and more notice. I know, I'm pretty insecure. Like, the weirdest thing anyone's ever called me, right, was, um, schnitzel tits. <laughs> yeah, I know, you thought Dory was bad, like, fucking schnitzel tits. I was like, yes, right, you know, because it's delicious. <laughs> and I looked down, and I was like, oh, it's probably because they're flat. You know, and crusty. <laughs> yeah. What do you think of Melbourne? I love it. I love it. Um, I love hanging out at coffee shops and smoking lots of cigarettes, but I can't do that right now because <laughs> I have a stomach ulcer. So ah. that was a terrible answer. I like Melbourne. I really like the cakes here. <laughs> I like the cakes. <laughs> um, 
cake is good. Um, I like, I really like St. Kilda. Like, I, I always have missions. I always go to St. Kilda. I go to, I go to Brunswick. I go to Smith Street in Collingwood, and I get Huxleburger. Please don't film me eating Huxleburger. <laughs> um, and uh, where else? City. And a, the city. The city. I really like Brunetti. Brunetti's like, oh man, Brunetti's so good. Like, yeah. cause, cause I live in like a country town. Like, I'm not saying they have like no good food, but they don't have, they have no good food. Like you have to make it yourself. Um, so yeah, that's just why I love coming to this city. Cause everything's like so delicious. Like pretty much just my plan is to eat everything and just get really fat. <laughs> Well, thank you, uh, Nina, and um, thank you for your artistry and your acrobatics and your company. Uh, close up on that. I'm just improvising, guys. It's crazy. That's fine. It's like. Uh, I'm not sure how to take that, but I, <laughs> I think it's positive. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> She's out. She's out. Smooth exit.